Good morning. So yesterday I ran into a situation and uh, with one of my girls and I wanted to talk about that because it's interesting to um, balance discipline with relationship. And so then the question becomes, do you have or are you afraid? Do you have fear or are you afraid versus do you have love and how much do you have in the relationship? You can be all you can be in love with someone and have all kinds of um, mentally, emotional, physical abuse going on because you have, for whatever reason, developed a codependent relationship with that person. And so I am I am acutely aware of wanting to make sure that when I am responding to something that happened, that I'm responding in as healthy a way as possible and still making sure that I'm raising kids that are squared away in their heads and in their relationships, et cetera. Okay. So uh, one of my daughters was using her iPad past curfew. One of the things that we have uh, studied over time is the effects of blue light on uh, iPads, phones, tablets in general, things of that nature. Okay. And how it can not only hurt your sleep cycle, your circadian rhythm, and your health, but it can trigger migraines and other issues. Okay. And with that being said, I don't want the kids to be, you know, on the computer absolutely a whole day or on their phone absolutely a whole day. So we set 7 p.m. as a curfew. And um, it was nine something a couple of days ago when mom walked in and one of the kids was on their iPad for, you know, still on their iPad. So they'd gone well past curfew. This isn't a small thing. This is hours. Okay. They had gotten sucked into a game and they were just playing it. Well, that's unhealthy. And I know I have absolutely gotten lost in reels and doing different things. And there are times when I just have to literally separate myself from my phone so that I can focus on getting work done, right? It, it causes me to learn to discipline myself and to improve myself as well. All right. So mom takes away the iPad. I get home from work. She says, hey, this is what happened. And I came in and I said, okay, so you're not going to have your iPad until after lunch, which was yesterday. And she was upset. And then she starts to negotiate. And she said, well, what if I sleep in really, really late? And then I can get on the iPad when I wake up. I said, no, you won't be sleeping in that late. And if you do that, then when you wake up, you'll have breakfast and you'll just end up pushing your lunch to four or five o'clock that day and then you won't get it at all because it'll be you know six o'clock by the time you get it and then you're off at seven and she said okay so what if i have if i have my breakfast and then i have a really early lunch like i turn right around an hour later and have my lunch can i get my ipad back sooner and i said yeah no we're probably looking at somewhere around one o'clock maybe two depending on when you eat your lunch and how quickly you eat your lunch. And we have other errands and things we have to run, so you won't be bringing it with you, etc. The relationship that I have with them is really important. Relationship matters. Took the iPad, was very serious about it, put it away, in a place that she couldn't just go and readily reach it. She knows better than to go searching for it. So I, I wasn't like I was hiding it, but it was just out of reach. So then what I did, what did I do? <clears throat> because the relationship matters, got my podcast done, got other things that had to get done, worked on a project where we are um, using the rule of 15, which is, a methodology I have, uh, I created for leadership development and training for my clients. And uh, we are bringing that into families and helping moms and dads learn not just good life skills, but also skills for their kids. And so that they can then turn around 
and use that to be a blessing to their families and help create, you know, unity and trust and confidence and self-confidence and accomplishment and no participation trophies. You've got to get it done. So I was working with a guy and we finally got the, the initial graphics knocked out. We're probably like 99% of the way there. There are some things that we now have to work on. But aside from that, it was fantastic. You know, it was a good process. And I was pumped. And I was really focused just on work. And I let the relationship slip for a moment. So I said, okay. And I went in there and they were watching some TV. And I lay down on the carpet. And just like leaned into her. And we watched TV together. Okay. Watched, uh, she leaks watching NCIS. So we. We watched an old NCIS episode. And then I said, okay, so who wants to go to the pool? <laughs> they're like, what? I do, I do, I do. Okay, go grab some lunch, you know, and then we're going to head out and we're going to go to the pool. And then afterwards we have some errands to run. I need to go to the grocery store, pick up stuff because I'm cooking Rubens for dinner. And yes, I make really, really stinking awesome Rubens. I mean, they're just like freaking awesome. <laughs> okay. And that was like, oh my God, all right, we're having Rubens. So TV time, pool time, time running errands, making a meal she likes. Not giving in on the iPad until we got back. And then she came up, she's like, dad, I've had lunch. We ran our errands, may have my iPad back. There you go. So here I am, I'm making dinner. She has her, uh, her iPad and I walked in on her and I said, set your alarm for seven o'clock. And she said, okay. And sets her alarm. At seven twelve, I came in the bedroom. The alarm had gone off. She was on her iPad. She hit, she did the equivalent of hitting snooze. And I, I know that there are times when I am tired. There are times when my head is not in the game, right? You can't see my screen. But, but what I do in order to prepare for my podcast is um, I have various topics that I'm going to discuss over a period of time, and then I relate those to something which occurred, and I bring in that information, and I might grab a scripture, or I might grab a comment from a book, or something that I've read, or I might talk about Jordan Peterson, or some other podcaster, like, you know. Bryce Prescott or whomever I listen to, Tim Pool, whatever the case be. And <clears throat> then I'm, I'm going through the steps that I have and I use my notes to then become the text for when I'm posting the podcast, whether it's on Spotify or Amazon or Google or whether it's going on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. And I'm doing that so that I discipline myself even when I'm tired. So this is my way of getting out of hitting the snooze. So because the relationship matters, because I'm teaching her discipline with love, I did not punish her for being on the iPad at 712. I mean, I literally looked at my phone and then opened her door. It was 712. Okay. What I did though, is I said, Hey, listen, take your iPad, go put it on the kitchen table. But dad, it's after seven. You, the alarm, did the alarm go off? She, yeah. I set the alarm. The alarm went off. Okay. So you just got sucked in and it went off. Go put it on the kitchen table. She's 10. All right. All of her friends are playing games with her. All of her friends are doing all of the things. And yet, 
I need to teach her discipline so that she can not hit the snooze, I guess is a good way of saying it. We're getting ready for school in a couple weeks. Here we are. Hitting the snooze is also a function of self-love. Because, and I should say not hitting the snooze is a function of self-love. Because if you've got goals and aspirations and you're working hard to accomplish something, then you need to overcome the snooze button. You can turn it off on your iPhone. You can turn it off on your Android. You can actually turn the snooze off so that it will not offer you the sneeze, the sneeze, the sneeze option. Yes, the sneeze option. The snooze option. And so it'll just keep going and going and going. The alarm goes off until you turn it off, which means you had to wake up enough to turn it off. You cannot accidentally hit the snooze. Okay? So maybe that's the next step. Maybe. Cross that bridge when we get to it. But I want her to learn the discipline, and I want her to understand how to achieve her goals. And they did really well with their book projects and things this year. I made sure that they were reading a number of chapters each uh, each day this summer, and they did great. Um, so I want to leave you with this. Because, again, it's about relationship. I can look at my daughter as just my kid. I can look at my daughter as, oh, um, let's say a member of the body of Christ because we happen to be Christians. I can look at my daughter as a member of the community. I can look at my daughter as a student. She's all of those things, but she's my daughter. So uh, if you look at St. Matthew uh, chapter 22, 37 to 38, those three verses, it says, and so Jesus was asked a question by a bunch of Pharisees who were lawyers who were trying to trap him, and he answered, um, and he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hen, uh, depend the whole law and the prophets. So everything that comes about in the Old Testament, all of it, the entire basis is loving God following his commandments, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Well, if you don't have self-love, if you have self-hatred, I would suggest to you it's awfully hard to navigate the love part with all of that, okay? Um, so discipline is important. So is the relationship. My thoughts for the morning. Uh, dad quote of the day makes this podcast possible and i am grateful for every one of you that likes and shares and subscribes it's fantastic to see how things are growing and i'm grateful uh, if you want to celebrate a great dad we have merchandise on our website dadquoteofthedaycom or dqotd.com uh, and also chef dad chef kid where you can enroll in our chef dad chef kid experience you can download our app from the apple store or from android and, or for android rather and you can download a ton of recipes that are in the app. And as you go through the recipes, you and your kids can upload a photo or a video of the recipe, and you end up getting actual money for completing the apps, um, the uh, the recipes, I should say. And that actual money is uh, can be used for merchandise for, you know, different things that you want to get to celebrate your dad and your kid and your family and your relationship, and it's awesome. So thanks. Thanks very much. Listen, have a wonderful day. Let me bless you and send you on your way. Father, thank you for all the moms and the dads and the kids and the relationship that they're building and the strength of that union and unifying those families. Lord, I ask that you would work out issues between mom and dad so that they can parent those kids well. They can raise the kids well. We raise the family well. We have strong communities and strong communities lean to a stronger nation and then a stronger relationship with other nations all over the world. Bless him now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks very much. Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.